Hey everyone, I hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. In this video, I'm just going to give you a really informal overview of using Contentful with a static HTML site. Um, so what I'm going to pretty much explain is how you can set up something really simple. In fact, I'm not even going to walk you through how to set up stuff. I'm just going to show you what I have and maybe that'll spark some interest in you learning Contentful yourself or maybe looking into other headless CMS systems. So basically, um, before I get to it, I'm basically just building out a site and I want the text to be dynamic. So if I were to go in here and change my content, and I'll, I'll walk you through this UI in a second. So I just want to give you like a really quick overview. If I had change this to hello world inside the contentful application and I go back to my little website and refresh, you'll see that the text actually reflects what I changed in their CMS. So if that's something you're interested in, be sure to stick around. All right, so first off, this little site is just something that I found a little, kind of like a an image of some styling of a website. I guess something if you wanted to like maybe have like a dog grooming service or like a pet training service. And I just wanted to try to replicate that and make a responsive website. I'm gonna make a tutorial about this in a second if you think this is interesting. Um, but my design skills suck, but I just wanted to kind of practice with my design and I thought, you know what, while I'm here, why don't I just try to look into something new as well, such as like a headless CMS, which is why I started looking into Contentful. So this is just another CMS that's out there that you can quickly hook your website up to so that people who aren't as technically inclined, such as like, I don't know, business owners or non programmers can easily go into a UI like this, like I showed you earlier, and just change text around to have it reflect stuff on the page. Now, there's a lot more to this. Um, I, I've just really spent 20, 30 minutes looking into this, so I'm still learning about it. Um, but I'm assuming that if you understand one headless CMS, such as this, all the other headless CMSs are gonna be very similar. There's gonna be some type of dashboard where we can go in and create data models. And then for each data model structure, you can start creating entries. And I think they also have like the ability to upload images as well. So like if you are making a blog and you need a place to store images or upload images, you can put them here. But yeah, so I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, I'm gonna show you how I hooked this static one page application to Contentful right here with this hello world. And I'm gonna walk you through how I created a model and stuff. So. Right off the bat, when you create an account, there's something called spaces. So you're going to want to create a new space. In this case, I already have one created called my safe space. But if you wanted to create a new one, I think you can just click on this little uh, icon here. Let me zoom in a little bit for you all and click on create space. So let's just go ahead and create a new space. And I think I might be limited to one. Yeah, so you only get one for your account if you're trying to do the free stuff which is kind of disappointing because if you look at the costs, it's extremely expensive, 489 a month, which is absolutely um, asinine. <laughs> so yeah, you could use it if you wanted to do something free, but this is, I think, just a good way to get an overview of what a headless CMS is. So since I can't create a new space, let's just pretend that I created one and I typed in the name, my safe space. So we'll click into that. And let me give you an overview on this. So when you create your space, you can go to the content model tab and you can define what your data model looks like. So in this case, if I wanted to add a new one called like text, um, I'll call it static text. And this could just basically be a data model that defines various static text on the page. So when you do this, you can basically add a field. So in this case, I'll just add a field of text type and I'll call it text and I'll click create. And now we pretty much said, okay, we have a data model called static text, which has a field called text. This is really similar to like a MySQL like database table where you create the table, you define what's in the table, and then you have to put entries in. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this one and again, this is a really informal like overview. I might give a more formal one if you would like this. So if I go to the content tab now, 
the idea is if I wanted to create some text, I could go add entry and say static text. And then that entry, I could say, um, I like pizza or something like that. So I'll click publish and that'll create an entry of the type static text, which we can then fetch from our front end later on. So we have the I like pizza set up. Uh, zoom out just one more. And what you could do now is if I go back to my models here or your content, I can click on this one. And I think there might be a way to get back this by an ID or something. Right, entry ID. So now over in the code, let me zoom in a little bit. If I wanted to pretty much fetch that simple content back and display it on the page, you can, first of all, ignore this. This is just because I'm using parcel, but you can import the contentful API if you're using like JavaScript. And then you can create a client like this and provide it your space ID, which if you go to your space, so if I go over here to my safe space, and I think if I, if I go to settings and I go to general settings, that's how you get your space ID. So that's how I got this number. And then your access token, again, you go to API keys and then you click on your tokens here and you can see what your access token looks like. So yeah, that's how you do that. So you set up your client and then you can start grabbing entries back. So in this case, if I want to get back all the entries that have a particular entry ID, I don't know how to do that. So let's try to find their API. So content full API example. So if you go to their content delivery API, I think they explain all this. But if we wanted to get it just by a content ID, I think there's a way to do it. Again, I'm still trying to learn all this stuff. It's, it's not that hard. I just have to read through the stuff. But let's actually do a different approach. Instead, let's do the content type is going to be of the static text. So it's a static text. Now this ID comes from the actual ID of your content model. So if we go back to the content model and click on the static text, you'll see down here there's a content type ID. That is what you need to put in there. So make sure I put static text, and I did. And I'm going to change this to, I don't know, texts or something. Print it out and comment that out for right now. So now if I go back to my UI and load up the terminal here and refresh the page, you'll see I get back some items. And in those items, I get one entry. And then I get a object that has a fields property, which has text of I like pizza. So technically what I could do is in my code, I could grab the text items first entry fields of text i think i called it make sure i'm not blocking the code there and then when i refresh the page actually just refresh for me it gets back i like pizza all right so again this was a like a really really sloppy rough overview because i just played around with this for like 10 20 minutes and i thought it was pretty interesting and i would like to share it with you all but the idea i think behind a headless cms especially now with like using Next.js or Gatsby is that you pretty much put all your content inside your headless CMS. So your business owner or whoever, your client can go and change text as they want. And then when everything is good, you can basically just build your Next.js site. So compile all your static uh, files or your, your Gatsby files, and then um, have that deployed to Netlify or What's the other one called? Vercel. And I think Contentful also has like webhooks set up that you can actually like put listeners on your data so that when someone comes in and changes this, it'll automatically build and deploy your Netlify application. So that's pretty cool if you're using the GM stack and you're using like, uh, again, Next.js or Gatsby or Nuxt. So keep that in mind. This, I thought it was pretty cool. I might look into more headless CMSs because I think it is really good to learn how to use at least one of them in case you have a client and you want to build him a website for his like his pizza shop but then you want to give him the flexibility to come in and change text without having to call you um, because that's actually a, a good selling point you know you can tell them hey like 
You just have to log into your CMS and change some stuff and it'll automatically change in your website. And that's really dependent on the client. Some clients might just want you to do it for them and you can charge them extra for your, your time and effort, but that's really up to you. So if you like this little informal overview, be sure to let me know. If you want me to go in more depth of how to use Contentful, I can do that as well. Um, but going back to the pricing, like <laughs> this is a little bit steep. So I might actually drop this and find something else because I mean, I guess you could just make a new account for every website you're trying to do. Um, but I'm sure there's some limitations you're going to run into with this free tier. And then you're going to have to upgrade to a $4.89 a month tier or something else. I'm always very scared about using services like this because it seems great and everything's free. But then when you actually start building a site that's getting hit with traffic, you start running into roadblocks that require a lot of money to unlock the next tier of access so make sure you read all the fine print when it comes to pricing and that you don't like shoot yourself in the foot with signing up for something and not realizing how much it actually costs or if you do just be um, mindful of inside your javascript code make sure you wrap everything with an abstraction so if you find out a month later that contentful is too costly or you can't use it anymore it's really easy for you to switch to a different CMS. Um, and that's kind of a higher level talk about like clean architecture and, you know, creating boundaries inside your code. But yeah, just keep that in mind. All right, so that's it. If you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment below if you've used Contentful before or if you use another headless CMS that might be open source and free, let me know. Um, I'm interested in kind of checking out some other stuff like always. Happy coding and have a great day.